Welcome to Pemba District, the hidden gem of Southern Province. Established in 2012, this new district is bustling with economic activities. The only thing missing are banking facilities. From the time Pemba was declared a district, it became a fully fledged district. All the government departments are here in the district. In education, we have more than 868 workers who are working in government schools. Then uh, we also have um, uh, the Minister of Health. We also have community development. We have the district administration. We have the council. We have uh, forests. We have uh, labor. Then we have institutions like uh, Kasia uh, Business College. Then we have uh, Kanchomba Farmers Institute. When you look at all these departments, the government workers we have, they are a lot. But we don't have any financial institution. So I'm appealing to the financial service providers to come and take up the space of uh, uh, giving the financial services to the people in Pemba district. Like most districts in Southern Province, cattle rearing is among the major economic activities prevalent in Pemba. It's for this reason that district officials want investment in value addition chain in the livestock industry. Uh, Pemba, in Pemba we've got about 54,000, over 54,000 uh, animals, that is cattle and uh, we've got about uh, 35,000 uh, goats and about uh, 12,000 sheep and uh, these animals are slaughtered at this abattoir that you can see here and uh, in, a, in a day, this is a small abattoir, in a day they slaughter an average of about 20 animals meaning that in a day they produce about 20 hides. So our main focus would be the hide and the skin, the hide and the skin. So the hide, we get the hide from the cattle and then we get the skin from the goats and the sheep. So um, um, it, since they slaughter 20 in a day, so we are talking about uh, in a month over an average of about 600 to 1,000 uh, hides, which uh, they just sold here. And after sorting, they've, they've no proper market that is there. So the market, uh, some scrupulous people just come, others they just, just throw because they don't find it, they don't find the, the owners. So if we find someone who can come and utilize this in the district, that will be a development. Because um, this hide at the moment is a resource that is not utilized, it's a resource that is not harnessed. So it is not helping the people of, uh, of, of paper. And as you know, the, the hide, is uh, one of the expensive cuts on a cattle, so on a cow. And so it's, it's important that we find some investors that can harness it and then process it from, from this, the hide uh, to, into reza and then it is exported out of the country. The district boasts of having the highest number of goats in the province. It is therefore not surprising that local youth have ventured in manufacturing of goat sausages, but authorities want more. So the potential that we have in Pemba is that uh, we've got currently 34,000 goats in the district, over 34,000 goats, and uh, World Vision is supporting us to double the numbers. So like last year, World Vision supplied uh, the district to over 2,000 goats, which are given to cooperatives uh, they call commercial producer groups. And then uh, there's a Skrika project also giving, supporting farmers with goats. Um, WFP is also supporting goats, so the volumes of the goats in the district uh, are increasing. And so marketing these goats would be a problem if we do not value add. So in terms of investment, in terms of investment, we want to see more investors coming in value addition and marketing of uh, these goats that we have in the district to add more. Like we have seen, it is on a small scale. But um, we want to have to, to a bigger scale because Pemba is in the mid, the midpoint of the country. When you're coming from Lusaka, going to Livingstone, it is in the midpoint. So we can mop up the other goats that are in the other district around, and then Pemba has land, Pemba has everything. 
so we can go in a bigger scale, uh, you know, value addition uh, in, in, in goat meat, chicken, sheep, and even fish around. Since we are closer to Sinazongwe, they are also closer to uh, Siavonga. And even the fish grown within the district, it can be used to, uh, can be used in this industry. So we are calling upon any investor who would want to come and beef up this industry so that we've got our own brand as Pemba. Pemba's huge natural forest reserves. Local farmers are taking advantage of this forest and now venturing into beekeeping. The local authorities are keen to see that the bee industry grows. Pemba has got a vast forest reserve which is about 5,143 hectares and in this when, you do, when we do beekeeping, it can produce more than 6,000 liters per year. So when you invest in beekeeping with us here, it means that you reap whatever you, you, you put in. Because honey is used for a lot of things and moreover, honey is medicinal. It can be used for BP, replacement for sugar. And then out of beeswax, you can also get polish candles. So it can be used for a lot of things and you're assured of getting whatever you put in. Perhaps the most fascinating thing about Pemba district is the rich soils of Siamlia area in the eastern part of the district. Here, all manner of citrus fruits and hot culture farming is done throughout the year without use of chemical fertilizers. In this uh, area, in this camp, the total number of farmers that are engaged in horticultural production are more than 500 farmers. And on average, every month, these farmers produce not, not less than 20 to 30 metric tons of tomato and over 60 metric tons of cabbage, in, just in this area. Now, this area in Siamulea camp, these farmers, the major challenge they face is um, the marketing part. And um, the only place where they sell their tomatoes and uh, cabbage and other horticultural products, it's an area called Bump, the road al along uh, toward going to Sinazongwe district. Now, these farmers depend entirely on people who pass by, the motorists who pass by to, to buy their, veg their vegetables and the tomato. Now, the challenge there is at this time of the year, because the production is throughout, they end, they end up selling their tomatoes as low as five kwacha a dish, which is uh, roughly about uh, maybe three to four kgs of tomato. And uh, at some point you find even cabbage, they will start selling five kwacha per two big heads of cabbage. Meaning that the, it can supply as many even bulk buyers, this area can supply the bulk buyers. And this area, even when the province had experienced a drought in this year, we still have farmers that are growing these horticultural products, these horticultural uh, uh, vegetables. It's because this area, as you can see, it still has a lot of water. So that is one good advantage and that's the reason why farmers in this area can continue or they continue producing uh, these products, tomato, cabbage, uh, onion and carrots throughout the year. Apart from agriculture, Pemba has potential in mining. The area lies in the same coal belt with Mamba where coal is mined. You see, when you look at Habanyuka in Pemba East, the belt which uh, covers uh, Habanyuka, that's the same belt which goes to Mamba where there's coal. I think we have um, some traces of coal in this area. We also have um, uh, other minerals like uh, granite. You know, in Pemba, the stone that we have, I think it's the best stone uh, uh, in Zambia they are using on roads. Because if you look at uh, 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 the road which was done by Greenacre, I don't know how many years ago, using this uh, stone which they, 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 they got from Pemba. 
The district is strategically positioned with a good road and rail network, hence the vision of district officials to make Pemba an industrial and commercial hub with massive land of over 1,500 hectares already allocated to this project. Um, in Pemba, Pemba is centrally located in southern province. And in Pemba, it has got a lot of investment opportunities, especially as far as land is concerned. We have got a, a vast land in Pemba. Um, we can have industrial park in Pemba. Already as a council, we have more than 1,500 hectares of land that we can give it to an investor who can put up an industrial park. Why Pemba? Why Pemba then? Pemba is something that is a, a town, a new created district in, in southern province, centrally located in it, between two cities. There is Livingston City, which is about 250 kilometers to, to Livingston, another 250 kilometers to Lusaka. So when you need investment in southern province, there's nothing else that you are going to look at other than Pemba. Pemba have got investment opportunities that are conducive for any investor to come in. Take advantage of the geographical location of Pemba, midway between Lusaka, the capital city, and Livingstone, the tourism capital, and invest in service stations, take our food outlets, and convenience stores. We are calling both international and local investors to come and invest in Pemba. We have a lot of we have a lot of investment potential, like uh, in dairy farming, a cattle rearing or beef, also in horticulture, tourism. We also asking some investors to come and uh, uh, to some investors to come and uh, prospect for minerals in Pemba. So as a local authority, we are very much willing to assist the would-be investors to come and invest in Pemba. With open arms, Pemba welcomes you, like we say in Tonga, Mwatamburu Pemba.